May 18th, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupts. The ground moved a little bit, and then, oh my God, the whole mountain took off. Spewing scalding rock and ash. It was coming toward us like it was being shot out of a shotgun. Unleashing deadly torrents of debris and mud. Mount St. Helens, its name conjures awe and respect, a prominent peak in the Cascade Range, indelibly marked by the explosive eruption of 1980. That historical event has been studied, retold, and memorialized in countless ways. But there is another evolving story woven into the landscape, a silent drama that plays out every day beneath the crater's rim. Today, the glacier nestled inside the shattered amphitheater of Mount Saint. Helens is both a relic and a dynamic actor upon the active volcano. This is no ancient, slow-moving ice mass resting on stable ground. From the start, it has existed in tension, white silence, and dark volatility sharing the same precarious home. Proof of this uneasy balance recently emerged with the discovery of a massive ice hole, a gaping void within the glacier, hinting at shifting dangers beneath and offering a rare glimpse into the interior workings of this living, evolving mountain. What secrets persist beneath the glacier's calm surface? What instability, what warnings about the volcano's future might rise up from the unseen depths? Join the journey into this hidden underworld where ice, fire, and time intersect and where the lessons of our planet's ongoing transformation are written in every fractured seam and steam-shrouded cavity. Could Mount St. Helens be hiding mysteries more profound and potentially more dangerous than we expect even decades after its most famous eruption? The catastrophe that rebuilt a mountain. To make sense of today's unstable glacier, it's vital to revisit the events of May 18, 1980, when Mount St. Helens erupted. Helens experienced one of North America's most significant and destructive eruptions. A huge landslide, the largest in recorded history, raced down the volcano's slopes, instantly reducing the mountain's symmetrical summit. Just moments later, a devastating lateral blast ejected a hot mix of volcanic ash, gas, and pulverized rock, flattening forests, scouring river valleys, and forever transforming the landscape. The glacier that once clung to the upper slopes was obliterated. Vast quantities of ice vaporized under the intense heat or were buried under falling debris and volcanic rock. Nearly a cubic kilometer of the mountain simply disappeared. A portion of the volcano and everything upon it erased in minutes. In the aftermath, the volcano's core lay exposed, encircled by steep, unstable crater walls. Even amid the devastation, life began to reassert itself, snow falling into the crater, mixing with the remaining ice compacted to form the first stages of a new glacier. This glacier, growing right in the heart of the newly formed amphitheater, became a symbol of nature's remarkable capacity to rebuild in the wake of disaster. Its story would be unlike any other glacier, because its environment remained uniquely hazardous and unsettled. In those first years, conditions inside the crater were harsh and unpredictable. The floor seethed with lingering heat, and at least five minor eruptions in the months following the main event kept the young glacier's world in chaos. These outbursts sent pulses of seismic activity through the new terrain, creating aftershocks in the fragile ground and the ice itself. Water from melting snow and ice trickled down, sometimes boiling as it met smoldering rocks below. It didn't take long for scientists to realize that the so-called Crater Glacier would be no ordinary patch of ice. Formed upon and surrounded by unstable ground, it absorbed the energy and uncertainty of the volcano beneath. Every eruption, every tremor, Every influx of hot water challenged its existence, sometimes eroding, sometimes reshaping, but always keeping the story of Mount St. Helens, Helens' continuing transformation in motion. A glacier in motion, instability, and acceleration. 
over time, the glacier developed into one of the fastest growing and most dynamic in North America. Unlike glaciers supported by solid bedrock, the glacier inside Mount St. Helens found itself overwhelmed by a constant barrage of rockfalls, frequent landslides, and occasional renewed volcanic activity. Its environment was always on the edge. Following the eruption, the glacier expanded within the crater's sheltered walls, accumulating snow, ice, and rock fragments. But its tranquility was an illusion. As debris continued to slip from the unstable crater walls, the glacier's surface and foundation constantly shifted. The weight of falling rocks compressed the glacier, driving it forward. Scientists monitoring the glacier noticed periods when its motion accelerated dramatically, its snout advancing not just by inches a year, but sometimes several feet or more, particularly as new material piled up at the glacier's upper reaches and gravity pulled it downslope. Some of the glacier's most rapid movements could be traced to large sections of crater wall that collapsed, landing atop the glacier and imparting extra pressure. Models of glacial mechanics proved inadequate for these new, chaotic conditions. Standard assumptions crafted for glaciers atop ancient unmoving stone could not account for the scale or speed of Mount St. Helen's ice advances. In fact, calculations in the years after the 1980 eruption suggested that nearly two-thirds of a vast post-eruption debris field was mobile, either being pushed by the glacier's sliding mass or by further earth movements on the crater's floor. What was driving this unpredictable momentum? The answer rested beneath the surface. The ground, saturated with volcanic heat and riven with water, was constantly melting and refreezing the base of the glacier. Cycles of thaw and freeze opened and closed rifts, carving hidden cavities that undermined the glacier's stability and encouraged sometimes violent, sudden movements. Meanwhile, measurements showed that the glacier's leading edge surged, the tongue becoming deformed or fractured. Glaciologists, unaccustomed to such active terrain, adapted with new tools, installing stakes, sensors, and markers to monitor the ice's ceaseless progress and to anticipate the ever-present risk of sudden collapse or hidden crevasses. In this way, Mount St. Helens Glacier became a living laboratory. Each new surge or stall revealed the deep and profound instability at play, not only in the glacier, but in the very ground that supported it. Unveiling the Ice Hole Amid this landscape of movement and change, scientists recently observed a dramatic symptom of instability, a massive ice hole within the glacier, at first mistaken for an ordinary snow depression. Closer inspection revealed a broad, deep opening, far larger than anything encountered in this setting before. Unlike typical glacial crevasses, fractures which form from surface tension, this hole displayed smoother walls and a plunging vertical drop into the ice. Evidence quickly pointed to geothermal heat as its cause, the result of warm gases and water rising from the volcano's heart, melting a vertical tunnel through the glacier above. Chemical sensors and temperature measures lowered into the hole confirmed that meltwater within was significantly warmer than surface ice, sometimes by more than 10 degrees Celsius. The ice hole thus became a window, both literal and figurative, into the glacier's internal world. Rust-red stains around the margins hinted at mineral-rich fluids drawn up from below, products of the volcano's ongoing chemical activity. These fluids sometimes contained hints of sulfur and iron, painting their story in lively, unusual colors within the glacier's blue-white walls. For scientific teams, the discovery was as alluring as it was alarming. The surface above the hole packed and apparently firm, was revealed to be undermined, its integrity compromised by the chamber below. And this ice hole did not exist alone. Smaller tunnels and pockets formed by warm upwelling could be found throughout the glacier, pointing to a network of melt channels and voids liable to grow or collapse without warning. The unstable base presented new risks. Should any void greatly enlarge, or if the ice above weakened suddenly, a collapse could occur abruptly potentially transforming stable-appearing ice into a sinkhole. 
the hazard extended not just to researchers in the field, but to the glacier's further stability. Domino effects could spread, cutting through the glacier, or even triggering landslides as large sections of ice dropped into unseen cavities beneath. The ice hole became not just an object of study, but a clear sign of ongoing volcanic activity affecting even the glacier's deepest foundations. The Rim in Perpetual Flux Attention soon shifted to the glacier's boundaries, specifically the rim of earth, rock, and debris that marks the edge of the crater. This rim, a chaotic blend of loose soils and shattered stone, proves to be as dynamic and dangerous as the glacier it contains. Season by season, the rim morphs. Heavy snow accumulates on overhanging cornices, only to crack and fall in massive avalanches following a warming spell. Temperatures swing, and freeze-thaw cycles loosen the bonds holding rocks in place, setting boulders tumbling into the crater below. Erosion exposes ever-fresh layers of the debris deposited during 1980s blast. Recent years have shown special hazards on the rim. Seismic data and field observations record not just minor surface slumps, but deep-set movements, sections of the rim inching inward or collapsing suddenly onto the glacier. Each collapse sends new loads of rock onto the ice, at times enough to alter the tangent or path of the glacier's movement for months after. Reports from field scientists and climbers remark that large sections of the rim now qualify as active hazard zone. Safety margins are redrawn. Rope anchors, or fixed lines, which once sufficed for traversing near the edge, are sometimes rendered useless overnight as rim features vanish or turn unstable. Overnight, cornice collapses have left lasting scars, sometimes erasing hundreds of tons of snow and earth in a span of seconds and making every footstep a potential test of luck versus experience. As sections of the rim move, the interplay with the glacier below intensifies. Rock and ash load the glacier, compressing and deforming its surface, while exposed slopes can refreeze into hard, icy battlements within days. Over time, the very shape of the crater's amphitheater subtly changes, its outline redrafted by one small avalanche or collapse after another. This borderland serves as vivid proof. In places like Mount St. Helens, boundaries are unfixed, subject to the forces of weather, gravity, and volcanic energy. Here, stability is always temporary. Beneath the glacier, the volcanic underworld. To understand fully the dangers and marvels of Mount St. Helens Glacier, one must descend imaginatively below the ice. The floor of the crater and the ground below it are anything but inert. After the eruption, the mountain's interior continued to simmer. Fumaroles, steam vents, dot the crater, venting superheated gases from deep below whenever conditions allow. Volcanic energy travels upward, channeling through fissures, sometimes heating rocks and water to the point of creating miniature, hidden geysers or tunnels below the glacier's base. This constant transfer of heat from the volcano's magmatic system to the glacier above produces an unusual subglacial hydrothermal environment. The glacier itself rides atop this tumult, always at risk from sudden shifts below. When water from inside the glacier reaches heated rock, it can flash to steam, pressurizing cavities and contributing to the formation of the very ice holes, tunnels, and meltwater lakes that worry scientists. The underlying solid ground is riddled with fractures, relics of past eruptions and shocks which sometimes reopen, represents another weak point. No part of the glacier's base is permanently secure. On a volcano, as fluid and evolving as Mount St. Helens, even the bones of the earth cannot be trusted to endure unchanged. Human curiosity at the edge. Interest in Mount St. Helens and its glacier spans generations. Native peoples held deep respect for the ever-changing volcano. Since that great eruption, the mountain has been a magnet for scientists and mountaineers alike. For those who venture into the crater, expertise in geology and mountaineering are equally essential. Researchers spend years training to read subtle changes in the terrain, to recognize the faint vibration that may signal an impending crack or collapse. 
Teams check seismic data, visual cues, and even the appeal of the air for volcanic gases before every descent. The glacier's complexity, the speed with which it changes shape and hazards, demands constant revision of safety practices. Every new discovery, despite the perils, the drive to understand what is happening beneath the surface is irresistible. For every piece of ice sampled, every hour spent listening to the mountain's inner rumblings, a fuller story of Mount St. Helens emerges, one that deepens our knowledge of volcano-glacier interactions and the challenge of predicting their future behaviors. But for all the instruments, all scientific planning, the mountain remains, at heart, unpredictable. What counts as certainty today may vanish overnight, replaced by a new collapse, a sudden surge of melt, or the slow grinding shift of earth and ice. Ice versus fire, perpetual contest. Inside Mount St. Helens crater, a primordial struggle continues. Cold against heat, water against stone, and fire. Each winter brings new snow, thickening the glacier's shield and temporarily asserting ice's dominance. But inside, volcanic energy persists, constantly challenging this freezing grip, dissolving supports, reshaping channels, opening up the possibility of dramatic change at any moment. Weather patterns intensify the battle. Some years, the glacier appears to grow, encouraged by persistent storms. In others, heat and landslides erode its margin, thinning and fragmenting the mass of ice. Always, the contest is dynamic, never resolved. A sign that, for all the violence, the volcano is not dead, but alive in its ever-changing states. As the glacier's edge shifts, or as debris from a fresh collapse sweeps over the landscape. Anyone standing at the edge of this glacial battlefield senses the fragility and strength mingling here. From above, it appears peaceful and still, but beneath the surface, heat, pressure, and water are engaged in a contest whose outcome is forever uncertain. In the end, the legacy of Mount St. Helens Glacier is neither permanence nor total destruction but a constant balancing act, one that may endure for centuries or vanish in the next upheaval. Lessons Written in Instability What is the greater truth revealed by Mount St. Helens' unstable glacier, a place shaped by catastrophe, then reshaped by its own relentless forces of change? The meaning lies not in a settled landscape, but in watching how instability itself becomes the most persistent feature. Each new fracture, collapse, or ice hole is a message. On this dynamic earth, there are no permanent triumphs, only endless adaptation. For geologists, each investigation, each careful expedition builds a record of instability, a chronicle of change unfolding frame by frame. For the rest of us, the glacier and its ever-shifting home are powerful reminders that even the most imposing ground beneath our feet might betray us, and that nature's creative and destructive forces always coexist. With each passing season, the glacier persists, sometimes advancing, sometimes retreating, always reminding us that the world is not as solid or predictable as it may seem from afar. The story is far from over. New discoveries, new collapses, and new dangers surely lie ahead, hidden beneath the ice or written in ash and stone. We watch and listen, drawn by the same curiosity and respect that drove past generations, ready to learn what Mount St. Helens will reveal next. Mount St. Helens stands as a testament to nature's power and unpredictability, a landscape where glacier and volcano, cold and heat, blend in an ongoing story of dramatic change. The unstable depths. What do you think about Mount St. Helens' moving glacier and the mysteries it hides? What questions linger in your mind about the volcanoes that shape and reshape our world. Subscribe for more journeys into Earth's wildest frontiers. Together, we'll keep exploring the ever unfolding stories written in the language of stone, ice, and fire.